In today's episode, we'll be covering National Federation of High School two-person throw-in mechanics. This video is part of our training series for new officials on the basics of basketball officiating. Here at Be a Better Official, our philosophy is to control the controllables. What does that mean? In this instance, it means that as a new official, you can become very qualified very quickly by learning and understanding the contents of the official's manual, also known as the mechanics manual. Good mechanics are essential to being a good official. This video will cover mechanics for throw-ins. We will only show the diagrams for a couple of seconds, so use the pause button as necessary. 2.2.2 Throw-Ins A. General Throw-In Provisions 1. Always indicate the color and direction of the throw. 2. The ball is taken out of bounds at the appropriate spot according to Diagram 2-5. 3. The spot should be designated by the administering official. 3. The administering official should always make eye contact with his or her partner before handing or bouncing the ball to the thrower. 4. The throw-in team should make a player available to attempt the throw-in. No appreciable delay should be allowed before placing the ball at the disposal of the thrower and beginning the five-second count. 5. When administering throw-ins on the sideline, a bounce is recommended. 6. When administering throw-ins on the front court end line, the ball shall be handed to the thrower. 7. Once the ball is handed or bounced to the thrower, move to observe the action unless the throw-in is following a successful goal, in which case no official need handle the ball prior to the throw-in. 8. The administering officials shall sound the whistle to indicate play is about to begin only following a charge timeout, an intermission, or an unusual delay. 9. The administering official shall begin the five-second count when the ball is at the thrower's disposal. The count is silent and visible. 10. If the clock has been stopped, the administering official should signal to start the clock when the released ball legally touches a player who is inbound. All right, let's take a look at a throw-in. We're looking for general throw-in provisions. This will be an end-line throw-in, a backcourt end-line throw-in. So we'll also look at that. <clears throat> White throws the ball out of bounds. Official indicates color, direction. Official indicates the spot for a designated spot throw-in. The team makes a player available immediately with no appreciable delay. This is good. This is an end-line throw-in without defensive pressure, so we're going to bounce the ball to the thrower. Checks with his partner, makes visual contact, nothing, we're not going to slow down. Bounce the ball to the thrower, hand is up to indicate to the timer when to start the clock, when it's touched inbounds legally. Begin a five-second count when the ball is at the disposal and everything's good to go. B. Starting a quarter. 1. The throw-in to start the second, third, and fourth quarters shall be administered by the referee at the division line opposite the table. See Diagram 2-6. Two, indicate color and direction, designate the throw-in spot, sound the whistle to alert players that play is about to begin, place the ball at the thrower's disposal. C. End line. 1. All end line throw ins shall be made from outside the thrower, between the sideline and the thrower. 
See Diagram 2-7. Two, all throw-in spots on the end line shall be outside the free throw lane line extended. Three, the lead should hand the ball to the thrower when remaining in the front court. Four, the trail should bounce the ball to the thrower in the back court unless there is defensive pressure. Five, when the clock is stopped, use the proper verbal and visual signal to indicate whether a spot throw-in or running the end line privileges are in effect. Six, the trail will mirror the leads stop and start clock, the chop, signal on a throw in in the front court. To ensure proper court coverage, the trail must open his or her position and field of vision to watch both the primary coverage area and mirror the start clock. All right, more backcourt end line. Rebound action, balls off of white. Indicate black ball, black. Indicate the throw in spot to our thrower. It's a spot throw in. Check with our partner, McVisual. He's got administering subs. We have a new thrower. Again, indicate the spot throw in. Hand is up to indicate to the timer when to start and we'll get a five second count start the clock all right front court end line throw in all throw ins are outside the lane line the ball is always handed to the thrower in a front court end line throw in All right, the first thing to notice is that the officials move in the boxing in principle, all players between, eyes on players. We have a front court end line throw in. It's outside the lane line. The ball is always handed to the thrower. The lead official raises his hand. The trail official also mirrors to help the timer. Both officials chop when the ball is legally touched in bounds. The lead is responsible for the action in his primary. Again, just the basics. Out of bounds. Lead will administer. Boxing in. Eye contact with a crew. Lead and trail both mirror the chop. Appreciate the game. D. Front court sideline. The throw in is administered by the official responsible for the boundary line. The throw in is administered by the official responsible for the boundary line. See diagrams 2 8, 2 9, 2 10. Two, the official not administering the throw-in shall use the boxing-in principle. All right, on this play, the ball goes out of bounds on the sideline that belongs to the lead official. It's a sideline throw-in. The lead is responsible for the throw-in. If the throw-in was below the free throw line extended, the lead could bounce the ball to the thrower, but the, spe the official's manual specifically states that in this instance, the lead official becomes the trail official and administers the sideline throw-in. Again, the critical principle here is the boxing-in principle. Watch how the officials move around the players with all players in view between them. That's the key component. E. 
backcourt sideline. One, the new trail officials shall administer all throw-ins in the backcourt and may need to change sides of the court, bump and run, depending on the throw-in spot. Two, the trail should bounce the ball to the thrower for backcourt sideline throw-ins. Three, the official not administering the throw-in shall use the boxing in principle. See diagram 2-11. Four, if a quick violation or out-of-bounds situation occurs in a team's backcourt and reverses the direction of play so that the throw-in team is in its front court, the ball will be inbounded by the official responsible for that boundary line, as in a front court throw-in. See section 2.2.d. Four, if a quick violation or out-of-bounds situation occurs in a team's backcourt, and reverses the direction of play so that the throw-in team is in its front court, the ball will be inbounded by the official responsible for that boundary line, as in a front court throw-in. See section 2.2. On this play, we have the trail calling a backcourt violation. By rule, the subsequent throw-in is in the front court of the other team. Who administers throw-ins in the front court for a sideline? The official responsible for that sideline. So this official is going to stay and administer the front court throw-in. He will become the new trail and the off official will make the long run and become the new lead. Understand that this is the correct mechanic. This is the proper mechanic. Also note how it again supports the boxing in principle. The officials have all the players between them. Nobody takes their eyes off players. F. Press. Should the defense press, the officials will position according to the location of players and continue the boxing in principle. The lead may start in backcourt and move as play dictates. G. G. Technical fouls. After a technical foul, the throw-in shall be administered at the division line opposite the table. See Diagram 2-6. H. After a goal. If the throw-in is after a goal, the opposing team should be allowed a reasonable time to secure the ball at the end line, after which the five-second count is started. All right, when we have a made basket, the official does not touch the ball. We still have to have a five second count, although the clock is running. All right, made free throw with substitutes. It's an end line throw in. Referee's going to administer this, indicate the where they're gonna start, but that they can move and verbally say it to the player as well. You can move. Partner administers the subs. The disposal of the thrower. Start the clock. I. Player coverage. 1. Activity of the thrower and nearby players are the primary responsibility of the administering official. Two, the non-administering official is primarily responsible for players at a distance. Three, officials should be alert for a timeout request and or a substitution. Four, if the timeout request or an attempt to substitute is made when it may not be honored, the request should be ignored and the substitute should not be back. Right. Critical that the official who's administering the throw-in Step back from the thrower to observe play. 
This play ultimately occurs in that Leeds primary, and he's got the foul. Okay, front court, sideline, throw in. Administered by the trail official. Designated spot, thrower available. Bounce the ball to the thrower and observe the action. We have a hold by Black 5 in the trails primary. Another front court end line throw in. Check with partner. You see that nod of the head by the lead. Hand the ball to the thrower. Step away from the thrower and observe action. Leads primary. Leads primary. Lead has the foul. Bobby Beckin. J. Boundary plane violations. 1. If a throw-in plane violation occurs, a team warning is reported to the scorer and to the coach. 2. After one team delay warning of any kind, such a violation is a team technical foul. K. Horn sounding. 1. If the scorer's horn or game horn is sounded, either official may recognize it and stop action with a whistle, even to the extent of declaring that the ball did not become live because of the whistle. Two, the horn may be ignored if it is sounded after the throw-in has started. L. Player Locations if two or more adjacent teammates take positions so they are parallel to a boundary line and are within about three feet of it, play should be held up if an opponent desires a place between them. Traveling called by the trail. The trail indicates the throw-in spot. The new trail comes across. All throw-ins in the backcourt are administered by the trail official. The new trail comes across and is going to bump the lead official over to the other side of the floor. Hustle to the spot. Thrower is available. Bounce the ball to the thrower for a sideline throw-in. Hand is up to indicate to the timer. Count is started. Start the clock. All right, we've included this play. This is a front court sideline throw-in administered by the trail. Inform the player of the spot. Tell them you'll bounce them the ball. The trail on this play needs to be behind these two players in the backcourt. We're anticipating where the subsequent throw-in is going to end up and end up in great position to officiate the play. Don't want this play behind you. Included this play as a good example of when not to slow down your game. If there's nobody at the table, everybody's ready to go, inbound the ball quickly, keep the game moving. Alright, this is a really short clip, but a great indication of what the lead faces in two-person mechanics. Notice how many players are in the lead's primary. The trail, no matter where they position themselves, is going to have a tough time helping out on a lot of this action over here. So the lead official really needs to be on their toes about officiating the action. So we hand the ball to the thrower, step back. First thing we have to observe is this screen. Is this screen legal? Is our cutter impeded? Second thing, 
Is the action by 42 red legal or not? Third, we got closely guarded. If this, this player was shooting a three-point shot, we'd need to judge that. Our takeaway here is develop your mechanics so they are automatic, so you can be freed up to officiate the basketball that occurs in front of you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and give us a like. Check the links below for additional videos. Share this video with other officials as well. Thank you.